Welcome to this library session using library databases. Uh, I'm Laura Rice. I'm the library director here at Saybrook University. Welcome. We'll be looking at what library databases are and how to use them for searching. For this video, I'm going to recommend some psychology databases and use examples related to the discipline of psychology. So let's get started. We will be covering what a library database is, library databases versus Google, how to access and navigate library databases, setting up effective search strategy, evaluating and managing your results, and then just touch on some ethical considerations. First of all, what is a library database? <clears throat> well, a library database is an electronic catalog of published items. These items can be articles, journals, reference sources, data sets, pieces of data. Any, anything that is a piece of information can be in a database. It's also searchable in a variety of ways. It may be subscription-based where you have to pay to access content. And, and in our case of Saybrook Library, we subscribe to the databases. So um, you do have to pay for them, but we provide them as part of your tuition. Or they could be open access. And we are starting to see more open access scholarly databases um, out there. The information in the database has citation information, so you can identify the author, title, publisher, etc. Databases might be multidisciplinary, covering many disciplines, or they can be subject specific. So, for instance, just focusing on psychology, business, humanities, what have you. They can also be format specific, so they might just be ebooks or streaming videos or just articles. I know students like to start at Google or Google Scholar. You may even have your Google Scholar synced to the Saybrook Library, which is something that I do recommend you do. Um, we provide a guide for using Google Scholar effectively and for syncing your own Google search to um, Google Scholar search to the library databases. But they're not necessarily the best ways to find credible and authoritative information resources that you're going to need for your academic work. So let's just quickly review some highlights on this chart. Probably one of the biggest is access to peer-reviewed literature. While Google Scholar can return results from peer-reviewed literature, it's not necessarily going to always give you access to it. When you're in the library databases, you can filter for peer-reviewed literature, you can easily identify whether something is a peer-reviewed source. So definitely um, you're going to have the advantage on using library databases there. Specialized and subject-specific content, library databases offer that to you. Google Scholar searches from everything, so it can be kind of hard to pinpoint or to look for something subject to specific or in a specialized um, way. <clears throat> Advanced search capabilities. I think one of the only search options you have for filtering is by date range in Google Scholar, whereas with the databases, you can limit your search and set up your searches way, way, way more um, effectively with many different kinds of filters, everything from peer-reviewed to um, a methodology that was used in a study. Full text access and interlibrary loan service. We do provide full text access in our um, library databases. And if we don't have it, we readily connect you to borrowing it through interlibrary loan. Quality and credibility of sources. Google, you don't know where it's coming from. You have that readily available to you. I mean, it's not that you can't find credible sources. It's just that it's not readily apparent in Google Scholar. And then legal and ethical considerations, um, just the proper use, fair use and copyright concerns you, it, using a database is gonna help you um, on that front. You do need to sign in with your Saybrook email and password. Um, this is how you get access to the, uh, the databases. You'll have to do it at some point, regardless of how you're using it, whether you're going from the A to Z database list or in one search or what have you. 
If you are ever prompted for an institutional login, make sure you're using one of the variations you see here. We're in a consortium with the community solution. And so most of our subscriptions are not under Saybrook, they're under um, some variation of the community solution. You can get to the databases through a tab on the library website called A to Z database list. This opens in a new window and it displays all of our databases by name. I also have that in a subcategory, just a quick list by name without all the descriptive, descriptive information and search features. You can also use OneSearch and get to the A to Z database list there, or you can run a search in OneSearch and then limit by a particular database. Here are some of the psychology best bets. There's annual review of psychology all the way through web of science. Now there are more than this and there are multidisciplinary databases that are good for psychology content. I've just listed some of the very useful, specifically psychology databases. Um, we have a, a subject guide for psychology students, which lists a lot of these in them and gives you access to them. Um, please note, OneSearch is not a database itself. OneSearch is a tool that allows you to search in multiple library resources, including databases, all at the same time. So I just want to clarify that, that OneSearch itself is not a database. It's simply a search tool. So the interfaces are going to vary by vendor, but most of them are pretty similar in what they offer. So you'll have generally a search bar, a single search bar for a simple search, or you can do an advanced search, which gives you multiple uh, multiple rows. You'll have all of, not all, I shouldn't say that, excuse me. You'll have a lot of the same options um, to search by subject, by author, by title, to set your date parameters, to look for um, a particular method, to look for a particular format. So all of these things are are included in these databases. So even though, you know, I, I show three different uh, search pages from a ProQuest, EBSCO, and Sage right there, and you can see that they're different, but essentially they operate the same way. So as you learn and get accustomed to using them, you'll, you'll kind of get used to how to use them um, going from one to the other. Now, please be aware that articles may appear in more than one vendor database at a time. Some of these journals do show up in different subscription packages and there is some overlap. OneSearch is a good place to see the various places that the article is, uh, is found in. Know that the content can change over time. For the most part, this stuff is pretty stable. You know, EBSCO is going to have the journal packages that they have, but new journals come and go. They disappear. They may be included in one, uh, one vendor and then maybe not at another time. For the most part, you're going to be pretty confident that the stuff will stay there, but it does change. So just be aware of that. There are also uh, something called embargoes that publishers put on some of these articles, and it's basically a delay in access. So it may appear that we should have something or the index record tells you that we have something, but then you can't get to it. Please just contact the library if you run into that situation. We may be able to get that for you through interlibrary loan. So don't, don't feel that you can't get something just because it's not quickly showing up in your search. As far as your searching goes, you want to try to be effective and you want to be efficient. You don't want to spend so much time looking and looking and looking. So there are ways that you can do this. The best thing is to understand that these databases respond to keywords and subject terms in combination. So you don't put in a question like, what's the best Mexican restaurant in town, like you would in Google. You're going to be identifying and combining proper keywords. So you want to extract the concepts from your research question or the topic that you're studying and put those in in individual keywords. And you want to connect them with Boolean operators. Boolean operators are those and, or, or not joinders. So and is going to narrow your search or is going to broaden a search and not is going to exclude certain terms from your search. 
So you want to get in the habit of extracting the best possible keywords and using synonyms and a variety of terms to find what you're looking for. You know, not just physical activity, but exercise, fitness, try different terminology. A lot of these databases have a thesaurus, which is a controlled vocabulary. So you can go in and locate the best subject term and do a subject search. That's different in that the indexers who are who are marking up these articles and making them searchable are putting controlled vocabulary on them. So for instance, the APA has a set of controlled vocabulary. So when you go into the psych articles, for instance, you can look up those controlled vocabulary. So, you know, physical fitness may be um, or exercise, for instance, if we're just going back to that example, that can be a medical term, but it can also be a psychology term. It can be, you know, different things. It can be, um, you know, functional nutrition term or, or integrative health term. It could be a lot of things. So you want to find the subject closest to your subject and search that way. It gets you more um, more focused on, on hitting those true results. Use your filter options. There are a wide variety of filters. We'll see that in a live demo shortly. Citation tracking. So one of the great things about OneSearch and the research databases is that you can look at the reference lists or the bibliographies for the articles you're looking at, and you can actually connect right to the citations that were in that article, and in the case of OneSearch, subsequent articles that cited the current article. So this gives you a lot more a lot more depth of finding related relevant articles. And then I always recommend that you don't set your filters for full text. If we don't have the article, most likely you can request it from another library through interlibrary loan. So I would say don't limit yourself right off the bat by setting for full text. So you are going to get search results eventually, even if you feel like you never will. Um, you will. So our databases are primarily research databases. This is going to give you an advantage over Google or Google Scholar because you can, you can, you know, right away see the information, the citation information associated with an article. It allows you to kind of put put some things to the test. We use something called a crap test in libraries. We try to look and evaluate search results. You know, if you're going to use something on this acronym, currency, which is timeliness, the relevance, that's the importance of the information to your needs, authority, who is the source of the information, accuracy, is it reliable, truthful, correct, and the purpose, what's the reason that this information exists. So even articles that are coming from a research database, you still have to apply these principles because for instance, in the case of relevance, you could find a great article that's peer reviewed within the time frame, um, written by an authoritative source, et cetera. But if it's not relevant to your question, it's not really going to be evaluated as a good article for your purposes. So these characteristics are um, something you should consider with all of the results that you get. And even if you're finding something on the internet, you should still be applying all of these um, all of these criteria to what you're using in your work. When you're evaluating your search results, you're looking through them, you want to do a lot of scanning and skimming. This is because you can end up taking forever if you start reading everything right online as you're searching. You want your searching to kind of be doing like a high level skim across the top. You're gonna to be scanning titles. Titles are very important. And the citation information, making sure you can identify who's writing the article. Again, in a research database, this is a little bit easier. You're going to skim through the article as you come up on it. You can either show it in HTML or PDF. You're going to skim through it. You're going to always read the abstract. You look at a title. In fact, the abstract is often displayed with the result so you can readily access it and read it because that really tells you a lot. 
a well-written abstract is very revealing about the content of what's in the article. You can follow this suggested reading formula or some variation of it, reading the abstract, kind of skimming through the introduction, jumping to the discussion or the conclusion and seeing what did they find. Um, then you can go back and look at the methods. Does it look like they're explaining what their methods were? And then looking at the results and the analysis. So you're kind of skimming through that. But then what you're going to do as you're collecting your articles, you're always going to go back and you're going to critically read the entire article from start to finish. You may even, in some cases, have to do this a couple of times. So you make sure you really understand what you're reading. So you can start out skimming, scanning, and then go into a deeper critical read. With those results, you're going to need to manage them. So you've determined that something looks pretty good. You, you need to find a way to save them, to come back to them and use them and keep track of them. And these are gonna start growing quickly as you work on your dissertation or your thesis. You're gonna have a mass, tons of, of citations. You want to, all these databases, this is another good thing. They have tools within them to do a variety of things, to save them to a drive, to save them to your computer, to email them, to create a link, to export them to a citation manager. Uh, you want to get in the habit of making sure you decide on a good way to be saving your results, okay? Now, don't forget too, that if we don't, if we don't have full text access to something, you want to make sure you're checking with interlibrary loan to see if we can get it. You can, in one search, you can expand your search or search beyond my library. So just please, you know, get, get familiar with the interlibrary loan as well. We don't have time for that today, but make sure you read about that in the library uh, page on interlibrary loan. Just some quick ethical considerations. You want to avoid plagiarism and use proper citation. So the citation generators that you'll find in these databases may contain errors. They are not going to be 100% accurate. They may be, but there's a very good chance that they're not. One of the things they really do frequently is um, botch the capitalization of of letters, especially in APA style. They might put everything in caps, which is not proper APA style. So even though the, the citation generators get you 90% there, you need to do that 10% where you're checking through it because that's ultimately going to be your responsibility to make sure it's accurate. And then you need to respect copyright and fair use guidelines. These databases are for your personal educational use. You should not be sharing and posting articles with other people that do not have access. This is, these databases are paid for and the licenses have strict use on them. So that's one reason why, you know, your instructors can't just post something in, in a course shell without getting copyright permission or having you access it through the library. So just uh, something to be aware of. So before we go into the live demo, I just want to review this screen. It's how to get help from the library. Email is a great way to get help. Library at saybrook.edu. Better than individually contacting me using my email address. I might be out of town. I might not get back to you fast enough, but the shared library uh, email is the way to go. We do have 24-7, 365 days a year live chat. It is a live librarian, not a chat bot. So that's found throughout the library site. Two things to check on the library website homepage are the scheduling and appointment link and the library drop-in hours. We have those a few times a week. And you can schedule a 30 or 60 minute appointment with a librarian. And then we do have some research guides on the instructional guides tab of the library page. And I just listed a few of them here, but you're welcome to um, go and, and look for more. So right now I am actually going to pause for a moment while we set up to uh, go to the actual library site. This concludes the PowerPoint. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at some live searching in the databases. Okay, one moment, I've paused my screen sharing and I'm going to pause. Okay, you should be looking at my screen 
And I have displayed here the uh, library homepage. So you mentioned, you recall I mentioned that the way to get to the databases is through the A to Z database list, which is right here. This opens in a new window. I'm going to go ahead and open that right now. I won't go on the quick list, but you can see there is a quick list here. So I'm going to jump right to the A to Z database list. And you can see, as I mentioned before, the community solution is what this is listed under. All of our subscriptions are with the community solution, with our shared affiliate libraries. So the A to Z database list provides a, a description of all the different databases that we have. And it's also, as you can see here, searchable. So I can search by subject, for instance. I can search by the type of database. I can search by the vendor. Is it EBSCO? Is it SAGE? Et cetera. Or I can just enter the name of a database or a keyword. So for instance, I can put psychology in here and then search for any of the databases. And it's finding 60 uh, psychology databases. Okay, for, I'm just gonna clear the filters for now. I want to show you something that you can also jump to a particular letter and any database that begins with that letter will be here. So you'll see some P databases here. I'll go back to all. And you'll notice that these databases have little icons after them. So all of these databases uh, have descriptive information of what's in them, which you can read. But then if you come down here, you'll see an icon legend off to the right. And you'll see that these stand for something. So restricted access, anything with a padlock is only for subscription users. This is an important one here, indexed in one search at the very bottom. So indexed in one search means that if you do use OneSearch to do your searching, the results will be pulled from any database that has this little magnifying glass icon. So you can see here that academic video online would show up, access medicine would, would show up, access neurology would not show up, okay? Ackland's video atlas of human anatomy would not show up because you don't see that OneSearch uh, logo there. So you would have to search in those individual individually. Normally, you might be searching from right here, and you would be looking up your topics and searching. And this is going to bring you to uh, all your results. And when you look in the collection here, you can see that there are a variety of uh, individual databases here. Okay. So that's just something to be aware of. So let's just say, let's go and take a look. Let's just pick one of these uh, databases here. I'm going to go down and I'm going to look for maybe psych articles, I'll, or I'll look for psych info. Psych info and psych articles are similar. Psych info is more of a, is a citation database. Psych articles is going to actually have the articles, but psych info is going to be a little bit more broad. So I tend to like to search in psych info over psych articles. So psych articles would be kind of a subset of what you'll find in psych info. So here I am at ProQuest. Our APA psych info is uh, in the uh, ProQuest uh, vendors database. So here's where we can start to set up different searches. So <clears throat> let's say I want to just start searching. I can come up with uh, chronic pain and I can either put in my and in the single search bar or I can put it in a second row. But right now I'm just going to look up mindfulness. OK, let's just look that up as a search. These are just keywords. Maybe you're wondering how mindfulness practices can help with chronic pain. So this is all you would do is search them with and. This is just a simple keyword search. So I'm going to go ahead and click my search button. And you'll see that I get 779 results. Okay, so I remember I said you start scanning through titles. It's good to have a, a good descriptive title on your own work if you ever intend to publish one day, because that's one of the ways that you, um, you know, it's just easy for people to read your work when you have a very descriptive kind of, um, kind of title. So I can start 
quickly looking through here, you can see I've got some dissertations here. I've got a scholarly journal. I've got a book. I have a variety of different kinds of resources. Okay, maybe I just want to limit these to peer review. So this is where I mentioned that you can either set that up in the beginning or you can start to um, set filters. I prefer the approach to setting filters after you get some results. If I limit to peer reviewed, okay, you'll see that I've cut out some 200 plus results out of here. You see the dissertations and the, and the books disappear from my results and all I have left now our scholarly journal articles, but that's what I want. So that's a good thing, okay? The other thing is publication date, another big one. Most of your, most of your faculty are going to require that you use articles coming from the last five to seven years, unless there's a reason to include an earlier article. You're generally trying to get more recent articles. So you can put a date range in like last 12 months, last five years, last, last 10 years. I don't always like to set five years because sometimes articles can be, uh, uh, you know, if you're if you're counting through the last five years, you might be missing some things that are six years old that are, can be really, um, really good and still usable. And some of these things, it takes a while for them to be published. I also, for citation tracking purposes, I don't like to limit too to too few years because you can you can find articles that somebody else used a couple of years later and you can get to articles that way um, just through citation tracking. So maybe we want to just pick the last 10 years, but be a little bit more critical about what we're looking at. So if I set the filter for the last 10 years, so that's going to get me down to 421 results. So now I have a little bit better that I can kind of go through and look for my um, look for my results. Now, you remember that I said when you're reading these, you're going to be kind of scanning the titles, you're scanning the, the information. This is from the European Journal of Trauma and Dissociation. It's a pretty recent article, June 2024. In fact, that might be one that could be embargoed since it's so recent, um, but we can find out. Um, Recall I mentioned reading the abstract. So if I click on the abstract, I want to read through this because I want to see if this is going to be something useful to me. And while I'm on this abstract page, this is where I can start to look through more information about these articles. We talked about subject terms. This is the controlled vocabulary associated with this particular article that when the professional indexers came in, they tied APA subject terms to this article. And you can see that we actually, as keywords, picked two that are actually subject terms. So we can search those as subjects versus just keywords, and we can get more focused results. I happen to do it as a keyword, so it's picking up. But there are going to be times where you're searching a keyword and you really want to find out what the subject term is for it. And we will look at that when we look at the thesaurus. But you can see other information here, which tests and measures were used. Um, we can see that this is a quantitative study. I have a lot of students asking, how do I know if this is a quantitative or a qualitative study? The APA Psych Info, you, it will list it out for you. Look at all the information you get in your uh, your index record. You can contact the authors. If you have a question about this study, you can contact them. They've got the contact individual here. You feel, feel free and, and scholars do this. They reach out to one another. So you have all this information, okay? So this is really helpful. So this is something you want to scan. Now, let's get back to our, um, at, back to the results. You'll see that, you know, I mentioned this is a, a citation database. We need to find out how we can get to the full text if we are interested in this. So let me click the button. It's locating the article in our library. Okay, I need to verify I'm a human. This is coming from Elsevier Science Direct. And that's where we can see this article, okay? So we do have access to this article. So it found it in our Elsevier database. So it wasn't necessarily housed in APA Psych, Inf 
info because it's a citation database, but it does connect us through the community solution. Now, here's one that I see. I'm not sure if we have this journal or not because I'm not seeing the community solution logo, but let's see how we can get this full text. Okay, this appears to be an open access article, so we are able to get it here. So you can see that we're using psych info to search for the literature, but we need to access the, the information elsewhere. The other things you can do, you remember I said you have all these options for saving this article. So let's say you skimmed through it. You skimmed the introduction, you read the abstract, you look, you like the methodology that you see. Now you want to be able to do something to save this article. So let's look at all of our options here. Okay, so I might want to run the citation generator here. I might want to email this to myself. I can print it out. You can save it to your research. Look at, you can save to the cloud. You can export the citation. Let's say you have a RefWorks account in the Saybrook Library. If you just click RefWorks, okay, I can choose the citation in the abstract. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. I'm gonna continue. It's exporting to my RefWorks. I have a RefWorks account, so it's going to open it for me. I already had it open. So I can go ahead and import this into my RefWorks, okay? So that's one way. But if you're using a different, um, let's say you're using Zotero, you can also, um, you can export it with Zotero. It's going to be an RIS format. You can see here, I can export it, I can continue and it's downloading. I believe I have to have Zotero open to go further. Okay, but it saved it. Um, let's see. Okay, do I want to? Yes, I do. Okay, it automatically opened my Zotero account for me. Um, so if you have a Zotero account. Okay, so I've actually imported these into my citation manager. And actually, I, I do have a, a syncing setup. So anyway, that's for another day. Um, if you want to learn more about saving these and using citation managers. Um, but you can see that you can start to, um, you know, create folders within your citation managers and you can start saving things right from the database. Okay, so those are all your options. I want to remind you that if you are saving a link to this article, you don't want to ever save a URL link up here. That is a temporary link based on your search. What you want is the link up here. You'll see the little link. This is the document URL in the database. So you can either just click copy URL and then go paste that and it'll bring you right back in here to APA Psych Info. You will then have to go to uh, the full text from there. So anyway, though, that's just... Um, you know, managing your results. And you'll still then want to put this to the crap test. So let's just quickly get back to um, modifying our search. I want to show you that you can set up your, your, uh, your filters in the beginning with some of these, the information down here. Let's say you're just doing a literature review and you want to find just literature reviews and maybe a systematic review. Maybe you want this, you're looking for review articles, not actual qualitative or quantitative studies. So let's see what we get by searching those same terms. Okay, so we have 82 results. So it has definitely filtered us down to looking for those. Okay, um, let's go back and modify the search again. Okay. Now let's clear the form. This time, what I want to do is I want to search. We noticed that those were, uh, we want to search them as a subject because we noticed that those were um, uh, thesaurus terms. So let's see how much more focused we can get. Oh, I forgot to set for subject, but we are, okay, let's go back. Let's modify our search because you'll see right away that when you, search these as a subject rather than a simple keyword, you do get more focused. So that means these articles are not just referencing chronic pain or mindfulness in their titles, which could give you, 
you know, false results or unrelated results. These are actually searching these two things together as a subject. So it gets us even more filtered. So, um, and then if we even want to do that even more, we can set it for peer reviewed. We'll get rid of all those books and dissertations that we don't want. And we're down to 283 results. So it's fewer results, but it's probably more focused. Let's get back to that page. I want to show you, I'm going to clear the form. I want to show you where you can search for terms in the thesaurus, which is right here. So let's say, um, let's say you wanted to um, look up a term and you're not sure what the, the subject term is. Let's just look up, let's try anorexia and see if that is a, a term. Okay, so I'm going to run my search here. You put in your keyword that you're looking for, and we want to see how anorexia is treated as a subject in control of vocabulary. So the correct terminology would be anorexia nervosa, and we would want to click that and add that to a search as a subject term, not just as a keyword. We can also explode and look at related terms. We can look at the uh, the definition of what this terminology would be looking for. It was, this term was created in 1973. These are APA uh, psychological index terms, and they do update these regularly. This is the latest, summer 2024. They're constantly updated because as you know, information constantly changes. But you can choose some uh, related terms instead. Maybe you just want um, body image disturbances which would be a, a related form, you can search those. So, so looking in the thesaurus like this is a great way to figure out alternate terms and subject terms for, especially if you're having a hard time looking for something. Let's look for meditation. Let's see what we get for meditation. Okay, med meditation is its own term, but you can use here are some other uh, breathing techniques, centering, holistic health. These would be some related terms that you can use. It'll give you more ideas. Okay, um, let's close that up. And let's see that mindfulness meditation is a separate subject term. So there is a distinguishing feature about these. So you would want to be able to read the descriptions that they're using. And you can see that related would just be breathing techniques and mindfulness on, on that particular term. So please familiarize yourself with these thesauri in the different databases. You can also search them by letter. If you're not sure what you're looking for, you're like, oh, I kind of think I know what I'm looking for, but I'm not sure you can browse. Um, you know, maybe you're looking for something related to race. You can see that there are multiple different kinds of race terms. So this will help you hone in more specifically on what you're looking for. So please learn to use the thesaurus. They do differ from database to database. It all depends on, on what you're using. Um, so I think I want to not overwhelm you at this point. I just wanted to show you around the databases. You can see that there are many other kinds of databases that you can use. Um, refer to the instructional guides tab over here. I'll show you for psychology. We have a Saybrook psychology and counseling guide. I know that these are different programs, but a lot of the subject matter is uh, found in the same kinds of resources, so I combined these. But I want you to make sure that you come over and you review the psychology and counseling guide because here you'll get recommended journal articles and there's a section, oh, what happened to my video? Well, I'll, I'll explore that and update that. I'm not sure where it went, but we'll have to, we'll have to troubleshoot that. I'll have that fixed. Um, list of suggested ebook collections, video collection. We have a ton of uh, streaming video related to um, counseling, psychotherapy, things like that. We have a whole section on tests and measurements. We have three different databases where you can um, review and read about and access actual uh, measure tests and measures and different kinds of scales and things like that and reference data set and statistics. 
We have suggested websites of professional association, podcasts, different things like that. Some search tips for controlled vocabulary, et cetera. Okay, here's one um, on thesaurus, using the APA with th thesaurus and index terms, something we just looked at. And then of course, always including some information about getting help from the library. Um, you'll also want to refer to some of those other databases, library databases, citation managers, a lot of information here. So what I will say is um, if you ever have any help, please do not hesitate. We can sit down if you are having trouble finding keywords or controlled vocabulary, please make sure you're contacting the library and you're getting help from us. You are not alone in this journey. You have people that help you. We are also part of the academic commons with other departments, writing, online learning and teaching, sponsored programs, Department of Research, Dissertation Services, IRB. We work together um, to try to help you and support your academic journey. So please, please remember to uh, come and visit um, make yourself, um, avail yourself of the services and the, and the personnel that we have here at Saybrook. Um, with that, I will conclude this presentation. I thank you for your attendance and I hope to see you in the library soon. Thank you all.